those MPs who drank the Kool-Aid and got rid of Boris Johnson are already asking themselves the question, who next? And I'm afraid that the lack of cohesion, the infighting, and occasionally the sheer stupidity from those who think we could have removed a sitting prime minister who secured a higher percentage of the vote share than Tony Blair did in 1997, just three short years ago, that they could do that and the public would let us get away with it. I'm afraid it's this behaviour that I now have to just remove myself from. And so, despite it being a job that I've loved for every year that I've done it, I'm now off. My gosh, I just said it out loud. There's no going back now. Wow. So, guys, did you expect that? Hi, Nadine. So what's your job and what's your department? What do you do? So I'm Secretary of State of the Department of Digital Culture, Media and Sport, which means that we're responsible for making sure you have super fast broadband in your home. That means you can downstream your movies. We're responsible for making sure the Internet's a safe place for you to go to. We want to make the Internet the safe in the UK, the safest Internet in the world. We're responsible for everything to do with sport, for making sure you've got football pitches and that you have tennis pitches in your communities where you can play and exercise your sports. There's a Nadim Zahawi in Cabinet. So do you want me to say Nadine or Nadine? There are only three women who call me Nadine. I'm My wanna... mum, Theresa May and you. All right, it's Nadine. So Nads is fine. Oh, That's what your brother calls me is Nads, as you know. So Nads well, is fine. Well, go Nads then. Yeah. So I would argue that to say that just because Channel 4 has been established as a public service broadcaster and just because it's in receipt of public money, we should never kind of audit the future of Channel 4 and we should never evaluate how Channel 4 looks in the future and whether or not it's a sustainable and viable model. It's quite right that the government should do that. But, but Channel 4 is not like the BBC. Uh, it, it, it's not in receipt of licence fee money. It, no. it, it makes its money from commercial operations. And... So, although it's, yeah, and the... Have you spoken to the Prime Minister recently in the last 24 hours? Why? Why are you asking me that question? I'd like to know. Um, on, we've, we've communicated. Is this, I'm, not, I'm really confused. Is that a difficult question? I'm just asking if you've spoken to the Prime Minister in the last 24 hours? We have communicated. OK. What has he communicated to you? Well, that's... that's I'm not going to uh, tell you the extent of my communications with the Prime Minister. I mean, I've answered your question. We have communicated. What is your next question? Coming up on tonight's programme, for a change, a man who is going to clear up a woman's mess. That's Rishi Spowers, the enters number 10. As as you were, Sunak's stability extends to the cabinet with the big beef steak and all her cages, but Bradman back at home in the home office. Sorry, I just completely messed up. They're in our studio and we've risked them for a clue. Stick around for Just Stop Oil live. But anyone who says that this isn't being coordinated and isn't being uh, organised behind the scenes, I'm afraid, is not telling you the truth. This is a very well organised campaign. It's a perfect storm for some. It's Remainers who are taking in others who are disaffected and for a number of reasons, those who, who lost their jobs in Cabinet or as Ministers. And I'm afraid anyone who says that this isn't organised is not telling you the truth. There were 56,293 responses when you asked people about privatisation. What percentage of those 56,000 supported privatisation? I think the figure was about 96%, but also... Supported 40, so I'd like to finish answering the question, if that's possible, Chair. Yeah. 46,000 of those respondents were from a politically uh, motivated organisation called 38 Degrees, who actually rewrote the consultation question in a far more leading way than was in the consultation. Also... Um, I think also a similar amount of 96% uh, also um, stated that there were no issues and no challenges facing Channel 4. I think they were the words, no challenges facing Channel 4 at the present moment, which is um, completely untrue. 
But I think what is a more important figure, actually, is that in public polling, 53% of the public were not aware that Channel 4 was state-owned, and they thought it was already owned by a private company. Uh, yes, that's quite a vulnerable issue, I think, for, for you, since my colleague here had to explain that to you at the last session. Um, the answer to the question, of course, is that 96% opposed uh, privatisation. This is how we're improving online safety. The UK is passing some new legislation to make the internet safer for the younger generation. It's effectively a framework to protect internet users from scams, illegal content and anonymous abusers. It will force big tech to stop their terms being breached and puts in measures to defend free speech. But is it true it will impact freedom of expression? No, we put in legal protections in the 19th section. Another thing we're doing to the laws we're passing is tackling online crime and cyber flashing. If companies fail to comply with the law, fail to protect the users that they're responsible for, the regulator Ofcom will have the power to fine, so platforms must keep people safe online. My question is a pretty fundamental one, which is the impression we're supposed to take now that Boris Johnson admits that things should have been done differently, and I think that's his words, and I'm not trying to change any meanings around that. The implication of that is somehow a different Boris Johnson is emerging. Is he exactly the same in your book? So your question was actually very open-ended and non-specific. But what I would say is that the Prime Minister, when he appeared before the 22 Committee last week, promised change. And I think uh, I think anybody who picks up a newspaper or reads a newspaper, uh, receives a television news bulletin can see that a huge amount of change is underway at present, particularly in number 10. There is no denying at the time when his government, when his government... Emily, Emily, can I get a word told in? Him to can resign, I just get a word in? That there were problems. Can I just get a word in? <laughs> Rishi was also working in the same buildings. What Boris Johnson knew about Partygate, Rishi knew. Rishi was fined as well. They were working in the same buildings, day and night, with the same people, breathing the same air, doing exactly the same thing. The word Partygate is just, you know, it's a misnomer. Mm. Uh, Number 10 is an office building with an iconic front door. And um, it was a workplace. Mm. Um, parties, as far as I'm concerned, take place socially. This was people in their own workplace. But I think it's, you know, the tag party gate is an easy tag to put on something that's, it's just, you know, it's a, just a gimmick title. But I think, I think it's actually quite, um, quite, uh, it's misleading. But I know from the Prime Minister's perspective that walking from one meeting to another in a different room, from his office into the Cabinet room, and being met with um, the cake that you never saw, mm. that stayed, that stayed in, in the Tupperware box. container. So I was with him in Cabinet, you know, after this all came out. And he went to me, there was no cake. There was easy <laughs> to be very, you know, he couldn't understand why people were talking about a cake. He never saw a cake.